Hi, I'm Tim Nelms, and this presentation is part of a series of presentations by the UK Association of Accessible Formats, introducing formats including Braille, large print, audio, EPUB, office documents, and of course, PDF. My day job at Crawford Technologies is helping to deliver the benefits of accessible information and PDF to large enterprises like banks, insurers, and utility companies. I'm chairman of the PDF Association in the UK, the custodian of PDF standards and the organization which manages the ISO standards process for PDF and as a board member and subject lead for PDF at UCAF, my aim is to ensure that accessible PDF is widely understood and adopted by the market in the UK. During this presentation, I'll be covering the following topics. What is accessible PDF? What's happening with accessible PDF standards? What resources are there for learning about accessible PDF? What important technological developments are happening with accessible PDF? We're gonna see a short demonstration of how accessible PDF works with assistive technology. And we'll be discussing some examples of how companies in the real world are using accessible PDF. And finally, we'll be seeing how you can take the next step with accessible PDF. Created by John Warnock, one of the founders of Adobe in 1993, PDF is a widely used format for digital documents and printing. Evolved from the PostScript printer language in Adobe Imaging Model, it is a precise language for describing page layouts, including vector graphics, raster images, and text. PDF was created with the goal of document sharing and viewing across platforms and has evolved over time to incorporate features for media, interactive forms, uh, self-describing metadata, compression, security, encryption, authenticity, and much, much more. PDF has been a democratically managed ISO standard since 2008 by the PDF Association. And such is the breadth of PDF that several standards have been defined for different uses including archiving, PDF-A, printing, PDF-BT, and accessibility, PDF-UA. The original standard, ISO 32000-1, uh, relating to PDF 1.7, has recently been superseded by ISO 32000-2, uh, PDF 2.0, and is developed by a technical committee and working group with representatives from 20 countries. Accessible PDF or PDF UA requires documents to be semantically tagged and marked so that they may be interpreted by assistive technologies and screen readers. Accessible PDF standards help in adding semantics to PDF documents. When PDF was first conceived, the priority was to provide a high quality page description language for printing. Now remember back in the 1980s, bank statements were produced on pre-printed stock with monospace fonts, and there was very little use of color, which if there was color required offset printers. And dot matrix was not uncommon for personal print. And all of that changed with Adobe PostScript, the Apple Macintosh and LaserWriter, the first desktop publishing software. I remember at the time being amazed by the quality of what was produced by these systems. What PostScript did was provide a language that could accurately describe the complex vector graphics, the lines and shapes, the fonts, the images and layers, and tra translate that onto printers using raster image processors. So PostScript and PDF had no need at that time for semantics and reading order, because that was determined by the human reader who could visually identify titles, headings, paragraphs, addresses, and tables. As far as a PostScript or a PDF file was concerned, the sequence of printing instructions could start at the bottom of the page and work up, so long as the printed page was correct. In other words, there was no semantics or no reading order defined by the format. Now, PDF UA superimposes on PDF the ability to describe critical 
document semantics in similar ways to HTML, things such as titles, headings, paragraphs, and the ability to sequence these so that they have a logical reading order. The PDF UA project began in 2004 as an AIM standards committee and ISO 14289 published in 2012 uh, was the standard and a minor update was published in 2014. In October 2012, the US Library of Congress added PDF UA to their list of archivable file formats. The Library of Congress's guidance states that PDF UA is a preferred format for page oriented content of the Library of Con Congress. Uh, work on ISO 14289 2 or PDF UA 2 is ongoing and is based on the PDF 2.0 standard. So, what resources are there for learning about accessible PDF? Well, there are UCAF resources on the UCAF website that include minimum standards for accessible PDF and guidance for the production of source documents. The PDF Association has a much more technical set of information that reflects the ISO standards process and includes the standards themselves, ISO 14289-1, as well as lots of guidance documents to help you implement PDF UA successfully. So what important technological developments are happening with PDF? Well, the standard continues to evolve. And currently ISO 14289-2, the working group for PDF universal accessibility is responsible for developing the standard. PDF UA2 is in committee drafts. The ballot for that has just uh, closed on the 23rd of October of 2020. And uh, already PDF 2.0 incorporates reference to PDF UA. UCAF uh, guidance was published and updated in 2020 as well. So uh, let's take a look at an example of using accessible PDF with assistive technology. We're going to be using an accessible PDF hosted in Adobe Acrobat and read using the JAWS screen reader on Windows, although there are many other screen readers available. And normally the voice should be going at hyperspeed for visually impaired users, but we've slowed that down. And what we're going to look at is a bank statement. And it's very typical in that it uses images, it uses text, it uses tables. And we're going to show how we can randomly access this using um, heading semantics. So uh, Jane, let's see how this PDF works with JAWS. So that's a, a, a sort of uh, intro to what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn JAWS on now and uh, you'll get to hear how it sounds. JAWS Professional Blue Bank Credit Card Statement Dash Adobe Acrobat Pro 2017. So just giving you some information about the file name there. Um, what, what it's opened up, it's telling me immediately what I've seen. I'm looking at the Blue Bank credit card statement in Adobe Acrobat Pro. So that's uh, an example of how it's giving you much more information than just the information that's in the document. But we'll carry on now and we'll see what it does. Blue Bank logo graphic. Heading level 1 January 2012. George Patrick Stobbert 123 and ADPT 2012. So, so far, so good. It's told me that there's a Blue Bank logo, that it's a, um, a picture of the Blue Bank logo. It jumped down, it said something, um, it said heading level one, um, which we'll come on to and describe in a little bit more detail what that is later. But uh, essentially, it told me the date and it confirmed that it was uh, for me, George Patrick uh, Stobart, and uh, some of the address details. Now, if I was to continue with JAWS now, it would just continue to read all of the information on the page. I'll give you just a, an idea of what that sounds like. Customer George P. Stobart. Account number 02378951. Customer type retail. Profile balanced. Branch Nye, Brooklyn South. So you can see that that would be uh, useful information if I wanted to read the whole document. But like I say, most people, when they receive a, a financial statement or something like that, they're 
particular bits of information that they're checking for. And um, we're going to show you now how, for example, when you have a properly tagged document that you can, uh, a screen reader user can navigate through it. So I mentioned headings there, and uh, obviously the date January 2012 in this particular document is tagged as a, as a heading level one. Um, it's the first uh, heading level. But um, what I also wanted to show you is um, throughout the document, there will be other headings because this is a properly tagged document. And this will make it easier for people to jump through the document with a screen reader and find the particular bits of information that they're looking for. So I'll just give you an idea now of how somebody can do that by accessing the heading menu. Heading list dialog. Headings list view. January 2012 colon 1. 1 of 10. To move to items use the arrow keys. So here are all our different headings. And uh, if you remember at the beginning, I said that I might want to check what I'd spent on my classic visa this month, and that I might also want to make sure that one of the transactions um, at a um, shop that I, I uh, used my visa card was correct. So I'll just show you how you can go through the, the headings in this document and get to the information that you are really interested in. Account summary, credit summary, checking summary, protect the account detail, classic visa 1234 start. So that's my classic visa. So I've found the right heading because like I say, this document's been tagged with number of headings in it. So now I can jump to this piece of information. Enter heading level two, classic visa 1234, star, 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 9876. Total expenses, colon 115. So, so far so good. I've got to my classic visa. I haven't had to listen to the entire document um, and I've understood that my total expenses for that month were $115. So let's see how we go about checking this transaction. Now, the interesting thing about tables is this is a particularly short table of information. Um, for, uh, as a, for a sighted person, what you're able to do in a table is you're able to look at the information in the row and your eyes scan up and check which column you're in at the same time. Now, that's something that we kind of do without thinking about it. But um, also it's important that, that in a document, you have those information, those pieces of information linked so that when somebody's using a screen reader, they're able to not only get the information contained in the row, but also match it to the relevant column that it's in. Blank table with six columns and three rows. So we're now in the table um, and we can go into uh, table mode so that we can navigate through and, like I say, get the, the information that's in here, but also link it to what column it's in. Space T table layer 01 slash 08 slash 2012 row 2. Value date 01 slash 10 slash 2012, column 2. Currency USD, column 3. Outgo 15, column 4. Income blank, column 5. Description Snicks and Snacks Co., column 6. Thank you for that, uh, Jane. That's a, a great demonstration of how JAWS works with PDF. Now, remember that many PDFs in the wild are not accessible. They can't be read by assistive technology or screen readers because they never had accessible tagging added. So several approaches are available to those wishing to publish accessible PDF. So first of all, there is the idea of producing something digitally born as an accessible PDF using composition tools. So using things like tagging and styling to set up semantics during composition allows this to be transformed into accessible PDF during, in quotes, printing. And from office productivity to graphics, arts industry to variable data printing tools, accessible PDF can now be created using a wide variety of tools. Now for those PDFs that have not been created in such a way, and many legacy PDFs suffer from this, remediation is required to help them fully comply with the standards. And this requires post-processing the PDF and adding semantic structure 
without changing the visual appearance. And such tools are uh, available for productivity tools, the graphics arts and for transactional systems. Now, uh, the two examples that we have here are examples of the second category, remediation. So the first is United Health Group, uh, the Optum part of that organization. And what they had was a large content management system full of uh, PDFs, which involve lots of correspondence with patients. So uh, documents like explanation of benefits. And these documents were held in various formats, including PDF, and needed to be remediated. And what they chose to do was to re re remediate on the fly. So as the documents were requested from the content management system, they were converted into accessible PDF which meant that they could also be converted into other alternate formats automatically because that could be derived from the accessible PDF. The second example is of a slightly different technique. This is a large US general insurer who have converted from a print language called AFP, often used in very high volume um, customer communication environments. And they've converted that into accessible PDF on a batched basis, so as the documents are produced. And they are then delivered electronically as accessible documents, which uh, has the benefit that you don't have to remediate anything, you're just generating every document as an accessible document. Uh, and that's part of the mantra of uh, the UCAF, um, UCAF, of course, make every document accessible. So if you like to take the next steps with accessible PDF, I can recommend a, a few resources for you to look at. First of all, you're very welcome to email me, tnelms at crawfordtech.com um, or Sue Day, my co-lead in the PDF chair at UCAF, Sue Day at iwanttoconnect.co.uk. Also take a look at the PDF pages on the UCAF website, uh, join our mailing list, pdf at ucaf.org or indeed go to the pdfassociation.org. Thanks for listening to the presentation today. I hope you found that useful and I hope you find all of the UCAP presentations this week useful. Many thanks.